What's good, team? Welcome to the final week of How to Build the Best Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck. And in this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about side decking and how to properly side deck. So without further ado, let's begin. Starting off by saying, when it comes to side decking, guys, it is the most important factor to building the best deck. A lot of players focus on the main deck, and they don't really grab the concept of trying to focus on their side deck. Side deck can win you tournaments, it can just win you games, and ultimately it allows you to be more creative with your deck, because let's be honest, most of you good decks nowadays are all archetype based. There are very few decks in between that allow you to be creative, so side decking. The number one thing we want to do when it comes to side decking is you want to know your deck in and out, how to you know your deck in and out, it's through your play testing. But by knowing your deck in and out, you guys will know what cards to side in for certain matchups. You guys know the cards to side out for certain matchups. And by knowing that stuff, you guys will know what to side. You guys always want to side deck for your weakest matchups and potential rogue decks. Reason being, there's no point of side decking for a deck. I and mean, I see a lot of players doing it. There's no point of side decking for a deck that you ever have a great matchup for. A great example of this will be me example. I play Monarchs and I know Cosmos is a great matchup for me. There is no point for me as a Monarch player to side deck a ton, a fuck ton of cards for the Cosmo match. Now granted, I know Cosmo siding cards against me like Mask of Restriction, etc. So instead of siding in cards to stop Cosmos, which I already know I got a strong Cosmo matchup, I don't want to hinder my deck's consistency. I'll side in cards that's going to stop the cards that they are side decking in. You get that concept? So never, never, never side decking cards for a strong matchup. Always side decking cards for your weaker matchups. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to side decking is when you're side decking, make sure that the cards that you're siding out of your deck don't hinder your deck's play style. Basically meaning, make sure you don't hurt your deck's consistency when you're side decking because it can really mess up, mess up your deck up. Like, I say a lot of players, even myself, I've been in fault to this. When they're playing against an opponent, they don't know the side deck, and so they're gonna side out cards that they really that make their deck function. That'd be like, for example, I'm playing Monarchs, I side out three Pantheism. Well, I didn't wanna draw, like, that's dumb. You would never wanna side out three Pantheism if you're playing Monarchs. So, when it comes to side decking, never side out cards. That's gonna make, it makes your deck function pretty much. I always side out the cards that allows your that is weak against certain matchups like like the vague veilers it's not gonna be good for matchups like if you have dead cards in your deck like upstar goblin you can side deck or you know stuff like that and last but not least know what cards to side deck for specific matchups when you go into big events and or at locals now this is going to help you for a more the tournament scene and not mainly for the deck building scene but it is essential to know what the meta is like and you're gonna learn it through play testing of course but when you're playing your deck and you're playing against the opponent and let's say you know you're going to a tournament and know, okay, I'm playing against Monarchs, what do I side in for Monarchs, what do I side out for Monarchs? Okay, when I play against Cosmos, what comes into my deck for Cosmos, what comes out of my deck for Cosmos, and etc. etc. That way, so when you go to a tournament, you guys won't be caught with your pants down and you know, okay, I'm playing against Monarchs, boom, 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 done. Let's play. Playing against Cosmos, playing against Mermaids, boom, 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 let's play. Because I see a lot, this is the biggest pet peeve I see. People go to tournaments, they have a side deck that they net deck online, and they don't know what side in and what side out. And that honestly right there is what separates the pros from the scrubs. I always know what the side in and what side out for certain matchups. Know what cards come in your deck and know what cards are coming out of your deck. You don't want to sit there guessing and then you get your have ten minutes left in the round and take five minutes side decking and then you got five minutes left and you're rushing to try to play. So there you have it folks, my how to build a the best Yu-Gi-Oh! deck series. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. It was awesome making it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys would like more four-power series like this in the future. And if there's anything I could have improved on, also let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, as you guys already know, I upload three days a week. Um, Mondays I do my general discussions. Um, Wednesdays I do my top tens. And on Fridays I do my explain series where I explain decks and arts types in detail. I do these videos because I truly believe in helping you guys become better players. I also do these videos because I truly believe in you guys helping me become a better player. Chris from Innovation signing out. Peace, guys. Stay innovative. Deuces. It's a general anti meta deck. It's very underrated, in my opinion, and a lot of other players' opinions. And it's a pendulum deck, so you guys already know pendulums have a 